right. Okay, guys, what I'm going to try and do this afternoon is make this as practical a session as possible. And I'm going to focus on technologies that can kind of make our training sessions a little bit more engaging. Okay. And to make a kind of what I'm looking at particularly is focusing on student centered content. Can I just get you just so that I get a bit of an idea of the audience? It will help me a little bit. Can you tell me um, if you're teaching in primary, secondary, or in higher education or further education? Can you just write in the window so I can get a bit of an idea? So you've got quite a lot of secondary, got a few primary, a few higher education. Okay, got lovely. All right, we've got a real mixture. Lovely. Okay. All right, so we've got a bit of a mix here today. Good, because that's what I'm trying to go for. Right, wonderful. And can I ask you just uh, another question? Can you just tell me if you know about my work and what I do? So do you know about uh, teachertrainingvideos.com and my work? Just say yes or no. I'm just curious to know um, a little bit. Right, so quite a few. Some know a bit. Okay. So basically, just, I don't want to make this an advert for me. So all I'm going to say is that basically I run a website where I make videos to show teachers how to use technology in their teaching and learning. And that ch that channel is very popular. In fact, the YouTube channel had 3 million views last year. So you get an idea of how popular it is. And it's really to help you guys. And the good news is it's all free. Everything is absolutely free on the, on the course uh, on, on my website, okay? Anyway, let's get on with trying. So what I'm going to do is I'm really looking for, I'm really look, looking to show you really some of the most pop popular technologies. So I get loads of feedback from teachers all over the world and they tell me, oh, Russell, we love this and we love that. And nearly everyone that follows me is a language teacher. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to show you, I'm going to focus in more detail on a couple of the key tools. Some of you might have seen these, one of these tools. I did present it in the first session, but what I'm going to do now is go back and look at it in a little bit more detail. And we're going to start by doing a quick activity to kind of see this tool. So what's, let's just quickly think about when we're doing an online course, and let me just quickly open this up. When we're teaching in a Zoom session or Microsoft Teams or whatever we're doing, what we're trying to do really is to do a lesson where we're doing something in Zoom, we're presenting something, but we've got lots of opportunities to get our users to interact with us. We don't want to do a really passive session, okay? So what I can use is a variety of different tools, and these are the four that I use the most, Answer Garden, Mentimeter, Wordwall, and Padlet. Now, my teachers, the teachers that contact me, as I said, there's, there's, there's a lot of them, would tell me that for language teaching, Wordwall is the best. So I'm going to start by looking at Wordwall in a little bit more detail, and we'll start by actually doing an activity, okay? So I'm going to show you this technology. Now, I did touch on this in the presentation yesterday, but what I'm going to do now is look at it a little bit more calmly and in a bit more detail and get you to experience it, okay? Because that's where you're going to realize how powerful it is, okay? I've got some other things planned as well, but let's start here because this was by far the most impressive or the most popular technology that I showed uh, to students last year, okay? So let's kind of, just gonna stop sharing and come back into the presentation. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you what WordWall looks like. So I'm gonna just jump over here and just come over to WordWall and look at the number of activities that I've got. When you work with WordWall, and I'll click by clicking on create an activity. And I'm actually gonna create an activity in front of you so that you see how easy this technology is, okay? Look at all the activities you can do, all of these. And these are brilliant for when you're teaching in a live session and you want to get your students engaged with you, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start by doing a really, really simple activity. But what I'm going to sh just show you, if I click over here on to, on to create activities, okay? The first one, if I just, sorry, click over to my activities. So I just click over here. I'm just going to give you a taster by showing you a really simple activity. And this one here 
is where we have to organize the GDPR. This could obviously be language teaching. It could be, in fact, we could even do a, a language one. Let's do this one here because this is a language one. Let me just show you this activity. This activity here, let me show you how it's made first. If I click on edit the content, all I need to do is literally put in order, always, very often, often, sometimes, occasionally, rarely, never. Okay, so first to seventh, I just write the words and I'm gonna call this adverbs, all right? So simple. I literally just do a list of adverbs from the most frequent to the least frequent. And then I can add more items if I want. And then I click on done. And the activity is immediately ready. Now, if I play this activity, okay, let what I'm going to do one little thing when I show you this one. Well, let me just hang on a minute. Just going to share the sound so to make sure that you get to hear the sounds as well. If I play this activity, all I need to do is obviously going to go from, so, uh, so always, okay, very often, and then often. And then sometimes, and then occasionally, and then rarely, and then never. And that's how quick it is to make that activity. It literally just wrote out the words, clicked on the button, and the game is ready. And then I can submit my answers and see what feedback I get. So you can see how quickly I can make activities. So I could be teaching a lesson and I want to check my students understanding. I want to get my students engaged in the Zoom session. Well, obviously we can put students into breakout rooms, we can use the chat room, but this is another thing that we can do. Now, if I click on the share button and I click just here, and then I'm going to choose enter your name. And we did do this yesterday, but not this particular activity. And I click on start. I literally just copy that link and then I come back and all I need to do now is to paste that link so that you can all access it. So I'm going to put that in, the, in there and I want you to do this activity. Now, when you finish, can you just write in the chat window, finish, so I know you finished and I can move on. What I want to do is kind of go a little bit behind some of the technologies I showed you yesterday and just explain them in a little bit more detail. Yesterday was a little bit fast. and um, We ended up losing a couple of minutes at the end as well. So click on that link, guys, and you should be able to access that word will activity and actually do it. Okay, just gonna give you a couple of minutes. And when you've finished, and what I want you to think about when you're doing the activity is what I'm trying to say is you can be teaching and then you can get your students to go off and do an activity. So you can check their understanding. Are they following me? Are they following the lesson? I might play a video and then do an activity in a word wall. I might read something or I might do a presentation, or I might listen to some audio and then do an activity. I'm trying to check understanding, so formative assessment, and I'm just doing a really simple way of making an activity, okay? Brilliant, guys, okay? Thank you for, for telling me that you finished. That really helps me to kind of keep the flow of the activity Okay, so when I, as I said, 3 million people watched my videos last year, and this was the most popular technology in 2020 by a lot, by quite a long way, by quite a long way. Okay, give you about another 30 seconds and we'll move on. All right. The reason I love this website, and it really is the word love, is because you are getting 36 different games in one package. OK, now, unfortunately, if you sign up to the free tool, you can only choose only five. You can edit and reuse them again and again and again, but you are limited to only five activities. OK, but what you can do is log in with two different email accounts and then you've got 10 activities or you might want to look at paying. It's quite cheap. I think it's about six or seven dollars a month but you can look into that. Start by looking at the free tool. Okay, guys, let's just come back and have a quick look at what you've done. So I'm gonna click on screen share again, and we'll come back to that, okay? So you can see how easy it is to share the activities if you're doing a lesson with your students online and you wanna get your students to engage. Of course, they could do it in the classroom as well. If they've got computers or got their telephones, they can also access this, this game that way. But I can actually now click up here 
and go to the results and you can see how much I use this technology. Okay, and if you come right to the bottom, I can see that 64 of you, and that's really lovely, have done this activity. And I can actually get information about who finished first and who finished second, et cetera, et cetera. Hang on a minute, there it is. All the information coming up onto the screen, okay? So I even got uh, in, in, uh, information about which ones you might have got correct or incorrect, et cetera, et cetera. And I can see how quickly you finish. So really, really simple. Uh, you know, to get results. So I use this a lot when I'm teaching online, okay? I use it really a lot because it's a great way of getting my students engaged. Let's come back and have a look at just a couple more, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna just to show you how simple this is, I'm just gonna do a couple of really simple ones. Now, this is a lovely one. It's called Unjumble, and I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna create an Unjumble activity, all right? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write a few sentences. So I'm gonna say, Russell lived in Spain for 11 years, okay? So that's my first sentence, and I'm gonna click on another one here. I'm just, okay, Russell now lives in the UK, okay? Uh, number three, Russell, is i'm just doing this just as a really quick example all right russell is studying polish and uh my recommendation to any of you is never try to do that okay <laughs> it's such a tough language to study but anyway um that's the problem of marrying a polish lady and therefore needing to communicate with her family but so there's just i'll just do three sentences obviously i can write as many as i like i just want you to realize how easy this is okay um so this could be for grammar practice this could be sentences after they've watched a video and they've got to remake them or after they've done a listen or it could be a summary of a presentation you could use this for anything OK, grammar would be the obvious choice, but summaries behind a video or behind a story or behind an audio or even behind the reading activity. What I love about this is just how fast it is to make these activities. Now, if I click on done. Immediately, the activity is created. It literally takes me that long. Now, if I play this activity. Now, all I've got to do is just put so Russell. So, sorry, put that there in the right place. Russell lived in Spain for 11 years. And now I get my marks and then it moves on to the next question. The idea is to do it as quickly as you can. So Russell, oh, sorry again, but to make sure that Russell, oh, sorry. Russell now lives in the, and I'll move that there to the end. That's going to work really well. Okay. Second, look how easy I can make these activities. So I could be teaching in a lesson, doing a Zoom presentation. Perhaps we focused on grammar. Perhaps we so focused on the story. Perhaps we watched a video. Perhaps we've listened to some audio. And then I can get students to make these, to do these sentences. Now I'm going to get, get you to do this really quickly. I'm going to click on the share button just to show you. And then when I want to spend a couple of minutes getting you to tell me what types of things you could do with this, all right? So same thing, I'm going to ask for your name, click on start, look how easy it is. I just copy the link. So I'm in a Zoom session and I want you to be interacting with me. And then simply now I can just um, stop sharing. I'm just going to share that link um, and click on it. Don't forget, guys, try it out for free first. You don't have to pay for this technology. I'm just demonstrating it because I said it was by far the most pe po popular technology um, in 2020. Not the most pop popular technology overall. I'm hopefully going to show you that. Do you want to click on that link, guys, and just do that activity? And again, can you tell me uh, when you finish that activity? Obviously, there's just three sentences to do for that one, all right? It's a really, really quick one, but I just want you to get a feel for this technology and what you can do with it, okay? So once you finish the super, super easy act activity, then just right in the window, done. So remember, in this one, you drag the words to complete the sentences.
So what I'm trying to do with this technology is I'm using it to build around my lesson. So I'm using it to, I'm teaching, but then I'm checking understanding because when we teach online, and we might have touched on this a little bit yesterday, one of the hardest things is all that information you, you lose about are the students following you because you can see them in the class, you can see their reactions, you can see how they're working in groups, you can really feel when you're in a lesson if the students are following you. It's really hard to do that when you're teaching online. So you what you've got to do is lots and lots of activities to check understanding, okay? Just give you a couple more seconds, guys, and then what I will do is kind of deal with questions. But I just want to come back and just show you a couple of things. So just a couple more seconds just to make sure that everyone um, is clear. All right. So as I said, really popular technology. As you can see, what I love is it's super easy to use. This is my job. You know, I spend most of my life looking online, looking at technologies, testing them out in my teacher training, and I even help to develop products. And even I would say, I mean, I didn't help to develop this product, but I would really say it really is a very good product and been really well thought through, both from the visual aspect and from the creation aspect. Okay, guys, what I just want to point out to you is watch this just so that you clearly understand. Once you've made an activity, okay, so I'm just going to close that one down. Again, I could go back to the results, but I could change that activity at any moment. I can just click on edit and then change the sentences and click on done. I have a new activity. So once you've made an activity, you can use it time and time and time again. So you, what you get for the free account is only five activities, but you can keep editing them and using them time and time again, okay? Now, I'm gonna point out just one other thing here. If I just click on my activities, look at how, Let's just look through here. You can see some. Now I'm going to just show you this one. I won't do this one with you, but I just want to demonstrate how, again, a, what a lovely activity this is. So this is great for speaking. And I've even done this where I've put the students in groups and I've got I've shared the link before they go into their groups. And then in their groups, they can play this game. And the way this game works is that one student can spin the wheel, whoever's screen sharing. And then they have to, once the question stops there, then they have to say, right, for example, in this one, what do you do in your free time? And then once they fit, once they've all answered, so they're working in groups, it just needs one student in each group to screen share this, okay? Then they click on eliminate because they've all answered that question. And then they click here and then they move on and then they do the activity again. I love the way it deletes that question so you can't ask her that question again really well thought through. Now, I told you I'm studying Polish. And one of the funny things is that I often help my own teachers to understand what they can do with technology. And all the teachers that I've ever showed, or my teachers who teach me Polish, I've showed them how to use this. And we've used these games in class and I've loved them. So I've enjoyed actually receiving lessons in Polish using this technology because it's really, really lovely. It's got so many options. So I really would encourage you to think about using that. But remember what you're trying to do is you've got your Zoom lesson, and you're trying, okay, let me just jump over there. You're trying in your Zoom lesson while you're doing lesson to get students to go off and do activities to add variety. And we're looking at the number one technology at the moment, and that is WordWall, okay? Now I'm gonna just stop sharing there. So come back and just deal with any questions. Guys, has anyone got any questions about that technology? All right, I don't want to spend so long with your Polish teacher. I'd love to have you as a student in my class. <laughs> Thank you. That's really kind of you. Yeah, I have to be very diplomatic. Yeah, and I don't want them to kind of uh, think that I'm trying to undermine them. But very diplomatically, I do kind of hint to them some of the things that they can do. <laughs> right. Anyone else got any questions? Yeah. A couple of questions. Go on then, please. That'd be brilliant. Um, while teaching online, we place a link on the chat for students. Uh, yeah. Explore it. Yeah. And then somebody else, uh, can we use these on MS Teams? Yes, yes, you could. So in other words, to share the link, you're saying, yes, you can. Or you, as you, uh, so those of you doing the themes now, you've also got the option in, in MS Teams to actually put students into breakout. Um, um, no, anyway, yes, the answer is yes, you can. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the link will work anywhere. 
OK, you can even get the students to, uh, to log in on their telephones as well. It's not quite as quick, but you will notice that the um, the link to the to the to the actual um, uh, to do the activity is not that long. It's normally quite easy to do it. So it's like wordwall.com slash and then a few numbers. So it's quite easy to to do it on your telephone as well. Yeah, someone's asking me the question, can you prepare activity with different activities? No, you each one is one activity. So you share that activity, the students do it. Obviously, you could make free activities, three links, students share. So you can set it for homework, okay? So you could create the activities and then share them for homework if you wanted to do that as well. Um, you just go to wordwall.net, okay, guys? Okay, but I'm going to give everybody at the end complete training in how to use Wordwall. Don't worry. At the end of this lesson, there's a special handout that you can email me and then just click on the video and I'm going to show you everything. So the whole idea is that you're not only going to, you know, you're going to do this training with me, but you at the end that you will get a video and that video shows you how to use WordWall. You'll see me taking you through the technology, all right? So don't worry about that. I always do that because, uh, you know, it's so easy to present something and then for you to learn it, well, you need a little bit of time, okay? Um, you know what? I've never really checked if you can generate a QR code, to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of QR codes. <laughs> um, so, um, I mean, I used to use them at the beginning, but then I kind of went off them. But um, as far as I know, the answer to that is no, you can't actually do that. But um, uh, you'll have to have a look. If you sign up to the account, when you go to share it, you'll see what options there are. You can share it on Twitter and, you know, the usual thing. But I don't think it generates a QR code. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you can re-edit, uh, uh, Ceci, you can re-edit the, the five games that you make as many times as you want and use them as many times as you want. So you can use one activity, quickly re-edit it and use it again straight away. It would be a completely different activity. What you can't do is do more than five in the free account. Now, what I did for a long time is I had two accounts. I used to log in on, on one email account and then log on in another. And that way I, was, I had 10 activities. And then what happened is, they discovered, the company discovered my video about them. And I said, oh, we've seen that there's thousands of people watching your video. We will give you a free account. So now luckily I have a free account. But um, originally I was kind of doing uh, that. Is that all right? Any more questions? Do you want me to carry on guys? Or any more questions? All right. As I said, there is a, yeah, just let me know. Everything okay, good. I don't want, what I really want to do today, the most important thing today, right, is not like yesterday, you know, it's a talk and I'm kind of inspiring you and getting you to think about things. What I want to do today is make sure you understand how these technologies work, okay? Good, good, good. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to try something, what I'm hoping now, okay, something that may be, um, so let, let, if we just go back to uh, here, I'm going to give you an option, actually, because you'll see what you know. So we've got Padlet, Wordwall, Mentimeter, and Answer Garden. You just write in the, win, in the chat window, if there's any of these that you don't know and you're curious about, I'm going to show you one more of these. So... Padlet, Wordwall, Mentimeter, Answer Garden. Now, I introduced Mentimeter yesterday, and Mentimeter has a lot of options, so that might be really interesting. That is a really fun one. Padlet, I'm guessing a lot of you know, but if you don't, you can vote for that one. That's pretty good. And Answer Garden is a quite simplistic one, really. It's very good for quick ones, and if I get five minutes at the end, I might use it anyway. So I'm going to get you to choose. Do you want me to carry on with Padlet? Answer Garden or Mentimeter, because I'm going to do one more tool from this selection. Let me have a quick look and see what you've been writing. So I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, so people are answering Padlet. I'm getting votes for Padlet. Answer Garden. Answer Garden. OK, Answer Garden. Super, super easy, guys. All right. So, right. OK, we'll do an Answer Garden just so you see it. Um, my advice would have been to vote for Mentimeter, but I'm going to be I'm going to allow you to be democratic about this. OK, so let's just quickly show you how Answer Garden works. All right. So what I'm going to do and again, it's really nice to say, to use in a Zoom session. You want a bit of interaction with your students. I'm just going to give you a quick example. We we'll use it for language practice. I'm going to click on screen share. I do use this technology a lot, particularly at the beginning of a lesson. 
Okay, so I'm going to jump over to Answer Garden now. Answer Garden does have a few benefits. Okay, the one of them is there is no login. It's super, super easy. You click on this button here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to ask you the question, what did you have for lunch? Okay, simple as that. So it can be really good for language practice, especially lower levels. This is a nice technology, guys, because it's so quick and easy. And then all I'm going to do is, and I will show you some of the options. I'm going to allow up to 40 characters in the answer. Okay, and then I'm going to come down to the bottom here. And I'm simply going to click on create. And there it creates now a link. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write my end. So I'm going to say I ate fish curry. Okay, so that's what I had today for lunch. All right, and then I press on enter. And that will now appear on the screen. So I'm going to share this link with you guys. You can see how quickly I made that activity. I'm going to click on stop sharing. So I come back into the main window. So now you can see how quick Answer Garden is. It is a really super quick tool. And you collect all the ideas in one place. OK, I'm going to click on that link. And I just want you to tell me what you ate for breakfast, for lunch. Sorry, not for breakfast, for lunch. And the same thing, guys, when you've finished, if you could just click and tell me finished. So Answer Garden's got certain advantages. It's great for quick language practice. It's great for brainstorming. It's great for collecting everyone's ideas. Again, it's nice as a warmer activity in the lesson right at the beginning. Right, guys, what did you do at the weekend? Right, to give, use one verb to, sorry, did I not give you the link? Apologies, apologies. Sorry, sorry, my fault. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what happens is sometimes when people write to me, it changes. So I, I'm not sending it to everyone. That was to everyone. Apologies. Click on that link. I always get too carried away. I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing. So click on that link and just write your answer in. And I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. It's like a word cloud tool, but it allows you to write a bit more. So it's kind of nice and it's super fast. That's what I like about it. Bang, you get everyone's uh, ideas together. Okay. And in a minute, I'm going to screen share what you've been writing. Okay. So just give you a quick second. Sorry, guys. Lovely, lovely idea, Nuria. So that kind of thing, brainstorming ideas together, really good for vocabulary, right? Think of all the words in the kitchen. Think of all the foods, you know, all the fruits, you know. We'll do a quick example in a minute just to demonstrate that, all right? Just to, I really want to make these technologies clear to you, okay? Answer gardening, super, super simple. Michael, you've already finished. As other people have finished, once you've just written your answer, please just really quickly write in the window done so I know. It just helps me to try to get as much in today as I possibly can. Brilliant. Lovely. OK, so if I click now and do a quick screen share, guys, so we can see. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to refresh the page and you will see that hopefully I'm going to get loads of answers all over the screen. OK, so this can be a really powerful way of me collecting people's ideas together. A lot of people seem to have ate pasta today. So that was very popular. And also, um, OK, so I can even see how many people voted for a particular, um, as you can see. Now, there's a couple of nice things here as well. One of them is that you can export that and save it as an image. So if you want to keep it. Uh, download as a PNG file. That's really good. All right. Now you can also have a moderate button. If you're working with young learners and you worried about what they're going to say, just click on that button when you set up your answer garden. And then what will happen is you'll see all the answers on the screen, but you will just have to click yes, 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 yes. And then it will appear. So it does not appear visually until you have agreed to it. Okay. Sometimes that can be really nice if you're working 
with um, a group of students, young learners. Notice you've got a QR code here as well, guys, all right? So I don't tend to do any of that. I, I have moderated sometimes when I've been working, doing teacher training with young learners, but let's just do one more example, just to quickly go through it again, just for a final time, just so you see how easy it is. And we'll try and do something else. So I'm gonna click back on Answer Garden. And again, I'm just gonna click on this button. It's so simple, okay? And I literally just answer a question. And I'm gonna to say to you, um, tell me, use one word to describe 2020, but let's not have any swear words, please. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to trust you. Okay. One word to describe the year 2020. All right. So I'm going to click down here again and I will allow you to, I, I, I can even control this. All right. So I can even make it password protected. I have a lot of options actually. Okay, you can eat, yeah, so you can, lots of things you can do. But what I'm gonna do here again, I'm just gonna create it for one day. I'm gonna click on create, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the word challenging. I think that's a nice word to use, okay? I reckon 2020 was pretty challenging. All right, so I'm chucking that word into the middle of the screen. I'm gonna now share that link with you and I'll try to do it correctly because I keep doing it wrong. I'm gonna stop sharing, okay? I'm gonna come back. Make sure that uh, it's everyone uh, in the meeting and that's all of you guys. And then I'm going to click on paste. I've got, the and I've got it right this time and I've shared that with everyone. So click on that link and you should find that again, you can start to write your answers. So just one word to describe 2020, but no swear words, please, because I'm not moderating it. Sorry, Russell. Um, Josie here has a question. She's saying... Yeah. Just to prepare for an opinion essay and get ideas, what website would you use? Also use yeah, card? Mentimeter. I think if I get a chance, I know that you voted for, for Answer Garden, but I think I better jump over to Mentimeter in a minute because it is super powerful and uh, maybe I shouldn't have been so democratic. I should have told you really. Um, uh, Mentimeter was actually the second or third most popular technology that I highlighted in 2020. So it's really, really, if you're trying to do a survey or quickly get people's ideas together, then Mentimeter is great for that. We'll do we'll do an example in a minute, okay? Great. So All I right. hope you answer your question, Josie. Yeah, Josie, I'll come back to you in a minute, and then uh, hopefully. Um... All right, guys, let's just have a quick look. Okay, so another tool that we can use for these quick activities when we want to collect people's answers and just see. Um... So let's just do a quick screen share. All right, and I'm going to update it now, and let's see what words people have used you probably thought of better words than i've thought of difficult sad yeah it's a good word challenging exhausting awful complicated daunting someone's used the word face masks yeah confinement fattening <laughs> very true that's happened to me revealing overwhelmed or overwhelming scary annoying frustrating wonderful yeah so this is a great way of collecting people's ideas together but so quickly and when you're doing a lesson in zoom the thing is that you really want to, um, you know, build in these interactions, just like I'm doing with you, because it's very hard, particularly when you've got 133 people in the lesson, to kind of really understand what's happening amongst the students. By doing activities like this, you can get a lot more engagement and understand whether or not they're, they're following you. OK, guys, before I move on, I want to do the same thing. <coughs> Any questions about Answer Garden? Is it absolutely clear how Answer Garden works? You literally write a question, click on create, share the link. Students can do it. Again, they can log in on their phones. They would have to put Answer Garden. They'd have to do it on their on their on their um, on the browser. Okay, but it does work really really easy. Yeah. Okay, nice for this, this idea, basically what I'm doing with you now, really, this opportunity to kind of get the students to interact with you in a session, but also really important is that it's not difficult, all right? You do, you're the teacher and, you know, I'm not finding it difficult to share these links with you and get you started because the activities just generate the link really quickly and bang. And so this, you know, you don't want to do anything that's too complicated because it can kind of, kind of make you nervous if you're not very experienced when you're doing a Zoom session, okay? Now, one of the reasons why I'm going to show you Mentimeter, all right, um, is because um, 
it, it, it's another technology with loads of options. And what we do, because some of you might know this technology or might not be aware of how good it is. So for either of those two reasons, um, I'll show you some of the ones that teachers don't often use. So I see quite a lot of teachers using Mentimeter, but um, it's not at all uh, that te teachers tend to use very standard ones. And the great thing about Mentimeter is it's free and there's no limit. So for if you're looking to do a survey and we're going to do a survey, OK, there's no limit to the, the number of um, times you use this activity. So I'm going to click on screen share again. OK. And I'm going to jump here and I'm going to just jump over to screen to Mentimeter. OK, so very much in the ilk of Wordwall in a way. OK, I'm going to click on your presentation. So let me just show you what that means. I was doing a presentation um, yesterday. OK, and if I click on that presentation that I did in Australia, then what I got here is all the people's ideas all being shared together in one place. And you can see people um, giving their feedback to me afterwards. And how did I do that? I literally wrote the question, what did you get out of the session today? And then shared the link. And I did a similar sort of thing in the session yesterday. So what I'm going to do now is just show you a couple of other options because this is a great fun technology. So I'm going to just click back on here. Watch how easy it is. I'm going to click on new presentation. All right. Now, yesterday I made a small mistake because I was trying to rush too much. So I'm just going to do, do this a bit simpler and a bit slower. So I just click on presentation and I click on create. Let me just move that create presentation. OK, that's it. Now, once I'm in create presentation, I have to decide on the type of question that I want to use. Do I want a word cloud, which is kind of similar to Answer Garden? Do I want to do an open ended? Do I want to do a Q&A? Do I want to do a select answer? Do I want to do a ranking? OK, and the interesting thing, and I think I did a ranking with you yesterday, is that or scale so you can scale things yeah so if i click on this one for example we can scale how much you like something from really don't like it to you really like it so i'm going to try this one with you we'll just see how it works i'm going to say i love these technologies and i want you to scale it from one to five and i'm going to put zoom okay and i'm going to put powerpoint and then I'm going to put, I'll tell you what, let's, let's do it more interesting. Let's do it. I love these languages. Let's see what languages you like. Okay. So I'm doing a scale activity around languages and we won't, we'll put in um, Italian. Uh, we'll put in English, I guess. Most of us are here teaching English. Uh, we'll put in Spanish. I'm going to find out which is the, we'll put in another one. We're going to put in French and um I'm going to add, uh, let's think of another language. We've got Italian, French, Spanish, uh, sorry, Italian, English, Spanish, French, and let's do, let's do Polish. Okay. Since that's the language I'm learning now, I just literally wrote the question. I've get the five here. And then all I need to do now is to click on, and I've got different ways of displaying the information, but I'm going to use this one. I click on the share button. Now, for any of you that are doing hybrid classes, this is brilliant as well. Notice, guys, some of you are asking about the QR code. You've got it here. If I click on copy link here. Okay, can you turn the sound off, guys? Someone's got this sound on. I can hear what's going on in the background. So click on copy link. Okay. Sonia, please. Someone turn off their sound. Okay, so if I copy that link, all right, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. I'm just going to jump over and just show you if I paste in that link so I can see what it looks like. What you have to do, let me just close that out. What you have to do now is decide, do you strongly agree or disagree? So I'm going to say, well, English I quite like, so I'll give it three. Spanish I really like, as I'm a speaker of Spanish. French is probably my favorite language, so I'm going to give it five. Uh, sorry, I've got the and then I'm oh, sorry, I've got that wrong actually. I'm doing the wrong one here, aren't I? Uh, hang on a minute. So that was Italian. So Italian, I really like English, yeah, not bad. Spanish, uh, same as Italian. French is my favorite language, and Polish I love because I'm making every effort to, uh, and then I'm going to submit that. Okay, so I'm going to share this link with you now. 
And while you're doing that, I'm going to show you what that would look like as well. So I'm going to click on stop share. Notice I just wrote the question, shared the link. This is a different type of activity, though. OK, we're ranking things from one to five. OK, so lots of opportunities to do this. You can change the scale. You can choose, change the words. I'm just going to paste that link in. And I want you to click on that and just choose from those five languages which one you like the best from a ranking of one to five. OK, and if I screen share while you're doing that, because this will be interesting to see. OK, you'll actually notice is really getting in the way that it kind of updates as you're doing it. So at the moment, I can so I'm going to put it into present mode. OK, I can see the average as each of you adds your name. So, so far, with the choices that you've made, Italian's 4.3, English is 4.3, Spanish is 3.7, French is... OK, guys, um, you've not... I've, I guess it's me again. I've probably shared to the wrong people. Sorry, it's because you're all messaging me. And <laughs> it means... Sorry about that. It means that when I go to share, it's only going to the last person that's emailed me. So there it is. Sorry, guys. I've really got to learn to do that. Good. You could use the QR code. Yeah. OK, great. Good. Because if you've got it on your telephone, yes. I know these days a lot of telephones automatically read QR codes. Of course, in the old days, they didn't. You had to have a QR code reader. So I guess I understand why they're getting more and more popular now. But anyway, hopefully you're answering that question. Let's see how the voting's going. So I can see now as the voting's going on, it changes live. At the moment, in first place is uh, actually it's English. So like a lot of you like English and Spanish is coming up. Yeah. But I'm quite surprised that French isn't more popular. 72 of you have voted so far. And I love this. I love this idea that the information comes up straight up on the screen. So this can be really nice for ranking things or, as I said, in this way, we're rating things. OK, but you've got all sorts of um, activities like this. Just give you a couple more minutes to put in your answers. 91 of you have answered now. And lots of you are writing in the chat window, so I'm not sure why. But when I come back onto the main screen, I'm just going to give you a moment more. When I come back onto the main screen, you, I'll see why you're all writing in the window. I guess it's to tell me that you've done the activity. So thank you very much. All right. Do you see how this works, guys? I can see 94 of you have voted. All right. So let's just um, press the escape button to come out of that. All right. And press it twice and you come right out. Now, you know, again, that was so easy. And that was free. And it just takes me a couple of seconds to make one of these. And of course, I can prepare them before the lesson. So if I now you're not limited to one question. If you want to have three questions, you can have up to three questions in any one presentation. I normally use it with just one question because I like to do in the middle of a lesson. I want the students to you know do a particular activity. But you can actually have a three at one time. Now, if I click back. OK, let's just do one more. So, again, you get the idea of what you can do. Here. Let's click on new presentation and we'll call this one. OK, APC four, AP, uh, APAC five. OK, so you can do one more. Let's just have a quick look at some of the other options we've got here. So what I just did then was scaling. OK, was scaling. But I've also got the option, for example, to do a multiple choice or to do a word cloud or to do type the answer or select the answer. And this can be really good for checking understanding. All right. And as I said, you can present if you want more than one question. So you can have multiple questions on the same link and then the students do the first question, then do the second and do the third. But I like to present the results. So generally, I prefer to kind of um, to use it just for one slide. OK, now let me go to this one, which I think was the one that we did yesterday. All right. In fact, I'll tell you what, let's jump over to this because this can be quite good if you're doing a presentation. All right. So I'm going to click over at Q and I'm going to call this is a Q&A one. OK, and I'm just going to say, do you have any questions? Now, this can be really nice and I'm going to show you why. In a hybrid situation, you've got half the class online, you've got half the class in the lesson. But see, when you do this activity, 
and I'm I'm going to just, for example, in this particular one, all right, I'm going to just again click on the share button. So all I've done is write written the question. I click on the share button. Notice here, right, that I can share the link, but students can also log in via their telephones. If they use, they just go to menti.com and they put that code in 9363460. Now I've been doing some training recently with teachers at King's College University London, and this is ideal for hybrid because I can have half the students accessing via the link, those students who are online and I share the link with them, but the students who are in the classroom, they just log in to the same question and to do the same activity OK, and they they just simply put that code in. So that's a really nice thing about this. So I'm just going to see if anyone's got any questions either about Mentimeter or any of the other technologies that we've looked at so far. So I'm going to come back and stop sharing. OK, I'm going to paste that link in, guys, to everyone. And you should be able to now literally write a question to me. So this one is kind of works in a different way. This is really good, for example, if you're in a presentation in, with a live audience and you want to get them to write or share their questions to you in the link. It's a really good way of collecting questions together. Or if you're teaching a lesson online, so you've got your students accessing some something, perhaps they've watched a video or they've watched some grammar lesson at home, you share the link with them, say, OK, I want you to ask the questions before before the lesson okay so you're doing this in the pre-lesson activity when we talk about teaching online we're often talking about what do we do outside of the lesson and what do we do in the lesson well this technology can be brilliant um yeah i mean all of these um all of these websites have got premium accounts of course they have they've all got premium accounts and they have to make money but i'm only using the free account okay if you want premium there's more things that you can do obviously but if you if you want to use it in the way I do, I use it free all the time. OK, obviously, guys, all these websites have to charge. They, there's no way with the cost of the running an Internet site and servers, etc., especially when you're using something like Mentimeter, that they don't have a premium account. Of course they do. But um, it's very similar to Kahoot in a way. It's not the same, though. It's not the same as Kahoot. OK, it's not, um, you know, Kahoot's more about quizzes. This one's much more about when you're teaching online and you want to check understanding. It's very good for around that Zoom format. That's when it's really, really powerful. I'm going to just do one last technology uh, if I get a chance. Let's just see how you're getting on and just see if anyone's put up any questions. So hang on, I've clicked on the wrong button there. Apologies. Um, so if I come back into the present mode, sorry, so da, 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 what was the second most popular activity last year? Oh, OK, yes, great. Someone's asked me a question. Lovely. All right. So the second most popular activity last year was a technology called um, Teacher Digital. Did, yeah, Teacher Dig Digital um, was the second most popular technology. And um, I'm not going to focus on that today. And the only reason for that I'm not going to focus on that is because um, let me just uh, mark as answer, Jen, then it'll come on to the next question. Sorry. The only reason is because it's a paid tool. It's not free. It's quite reasonable, but it is a paid tool. Is the size of the group unlimited on Wordball? Yeah, it seems to be. There's no, there doesn't seem to be any limits when you're working with Workwall. So again, I could now answer that question, come on to the next. When did you start teaching? I started teaching in 1987. OK, so a long time ago, my first job was in Greece. I taught on the island of Crete in Rethymnon. Next question, can the students in the class also join with a QR card? Yes, of course they can. If they've got a telephone with a QR reader, then they can definitely do that. OK, this is a kind of nice way of working. Can you see the results when you use more than one slide in the same presentation? Yes, you can. You have to decide. Uh, these are brilliant questions, by the way. You have to decide how you want to uh, run if you have more than one slide in a Mentimeter, you've got two ways, two different ways of controlling it. You can control it as the teacher. So everyone finishes question one, then moves on to set question two, or you can set it as student controlled and they can just simply do the three questions and then you can go through the results. OK, I did. Question I, here in Eulalia, that you posted to everyone. Sorry. Uh, there's a question from Eulalia, one of the yep. attendees. 
that she posted to everyone and she says could you compare mentimeter with kahoot no 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 i said they're, they're quite different types of tools mentimeter is good for quick collecting of, of information kahoot is for for really doing an online quiz where the students have got a whole series of questions coming up onto the screen now you one one thing about these technologies and kahoot's absolutely brilliant kahoot's really good for example in a classroom in a in a blended learning context because the students can log in on their telephones and you have to put the questions onto the screen kahoot's a much bigger type of technology Mentimeter is good for this kind of quick input where you just want to check their understanding or collect all their ideas together into, into one place. OK, let me just try and deal with one or two more questions. Yeah. Can you de delete inappropriate comments as, w, uh, as it can be done in Answergon? Not on Mentimeter, guys, not in the free tool. You can't do that. So that's something you might want to keep in mind. OK, um, how private are these platforms? God, I mean, that's a question that's really hard for me to answer. I know no more than any other particular website that you work for, you know, you're working with. So there's only obviously the, li the general limitations of how effective you are in saving your your platform, you know, using a really good password. For example, if you know about making a complicated password, don't forget your students don't need to log in, do they? Um, when they're using these systems, you're the one that logs in. And obviously, if a student shares a link with somebody else outside of your lesson when you're using these technologies, in theory, that person could log in. There's, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's only a limit to how much control you can have when you're doing these types of activities. And obviously, if you're working with young learners, I guess that's something you have to consider okay but they're no more no more or less safe than any other technologies you're yeah, not a question but a comment thank for so much and engage thank you very much that's really kind of you lovely is answer answer god is totally free i've been using it for many years all right can you share all these links on moodle let's say for students to answer the questions yes they can yes you could you do that with mentimeter when you do it they've got two days the same i think um the same with word wall Word will might even be for longer, but yes, you can. So you, you don't have to use them instantly. Okay, can students log in mentally with their tablets? Yes, they can. So they can answer through the tablets. Remember I said you can do it through a code or through the link, all right? Um, no questions, it was great, thank you. That's really kind of you, really glad that was. Uh, can we keep the activities that we have created? Yes, you can. And then of course you can use them again. The trouble with Mentimeter is you're not really gonna do that, are you? Because you've already got all your results. But what you can do is just go back and then just say, you know, clear the results, click on the button says clear the results, and then you can start do exactly the same activity again. I never do that. It's so easy to make a new activity. I literally just make them. These are great questions. I haven't, I haven't got an idea what moat is guys. So sorry, I can't help you there. Okay, where do you put the code to answer a question? A different page? Where do you put the code to answer a question? I'm sorry, I'm not, I can't really understand that question. Uh, I'm not sure there. No, I'm not sure what you say. Can we save the activities we have created? Yes, we can. I just said that. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Good. Do students need? No, they don't need to sign in. None of these websites, they need to sign in. Okay. So that was one thing. No questions. Really interesting. Thank you. That's really kind. Thank you. All right. I won't listen to any more. I think we got a bit, I've de dealt with a fair number of questions. I'm not quite sure where I am with time. Okay. Let's just come back. So in fact, we're about two minutes from ending. Okay, so guys, I don't normally do this, but just just as, as I, if you want to, I'm going to just show you where what I've done for you. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to my presentation, which was a super super short presentation anyway, and it, I had kind of planned to do a couple of other things, but I didn't do them in the end. I didn't quite get to this one, but. This is what I produce for you. These these videos here will show you how to use Word War, show you how to use Mentimeter, and then you've got some bonus ones here, okay, as well. I was hoping to do quizzes today, and I've put these in as busy as bonus ones. Why have I put these in as bonus ones? Well, if you were to ask me, what's the most pe popular technology on my website forever? It's screencast technology. That is the technology that you should spend your time learning if you get a chance. Absolutely brilliant. Word Wall was the most popular of last year. Mentimeter was three. Quizzes was about five or six. Screencast technology is overall on my website the most popular one. Now, if you want this handout, all you need to do is, and I'm sorry, I've put the wrong, let me just quickly change that one second. One teeny weeny mistake I made there. Let me just get that right. One second. Hang on a minute. Just realize I'll, I'll be with you in one second. Just want to put that in there and get the right. Da, 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 da. Okay, and that's it. And Russell hand that lovely. Okay, back I go. 
screen share. If you want a, a copy of that, all those videos, okay, which I will just share that for you. All you need to do is write russellhandout at gmail.com and just put subject APAC and then hello, I am blah, blah, blah. That's all you need to do. And then automatically you will get that handout and you will learn you can watch those videos and learn all those technologies as simple as that russell handout and it's all automated so if you just write that in on your telephone on or email just write, email me automatically you'll be sent that handout and the videos you'll see that some of them are very very popular some of them get played even like a quarter of a million times um there are videos there that show you how to excuse me sorry videos that show you how to use those technologies all right I hope that really helps you and I hope that was a useful session. I really enjoyed doing that. Can I just say a big, big thank you for the way that you engaged with me there? That was wonderful. Made it really easy. Everyone writing when they'd finished the activity and thanks for participating. Okay. Russell handout gmail.com. Big thank you to APAC for, uh, APAC for, for inviting me along. Um, I was a bit better than yesterday. I went too fast yesterday. So I'm, I slowed down a little bit today. Cheers, guys. Hope that was useful. Really hope that was useful. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That was, yeah, that was great. <laughs> it's a big list of things to try. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, we hope, I see everybody enjoyed it. And good, it was good, good. Active, which is Thank you very much. Listen, thanks. Brilliant. So, yeah, now we have loads of homework, trying things out. Everything we learned today in your session and in the other session. So, yeah, plenty of homework for us. Good, good, good. All right. Cheers, guys. Have a lovely weekend. And I hope to catch up with you all soon. Thank you very much for inviting me along. All right. And enjoy the rest of the conference. Yeah, you've got we've got one more day yet. And, and then you guys can relax afterwards. Yeah. <laughs>